The Chinese space program has grown massively over the past 30 years, and a lot of that success is due to China's incredible ability to develop and build new rocket designs at a rapid pace. China has been pressing steadily forward with an entire stable of their Long March rockets. They've successfully flown a crew-rated space capsule, sent robotic missions to the moon, built a space station, and even successfully landed a rover on Mars. But there's one category where the Chinese are still lacking, a super heavy lift rocket. This is the kind of machine that is essential to putting a crew on the moon and achieving interplanetary travel. So far, NASA and SpaceX have cornered the market on these gigantic rockets, but that could all change with China's latest project, the Long March 9. This is the Space Race. Every rocket in the history of the Chinese space program has been built under the name Long March, which is a tribute to the formative years of Chairman Mao when he first rose to power as the commander of the Red Army. Mao led his troops on a circling retreat into the mountains of North China to evade the nationalist forces. They covered 10,000 kilometers, crossed 18 mountain ranges, and 24 rivers to reach the northwestern province. The vast majority of Mao's troops died along the way, but the act became so inspirational and heroic that the Chinese communists were able to rally support and rebuild the People's Army that would eventually install Mao Zedong as leader of the Republic of China. The first member in China's family of Long March rockets was the Long March 1. The 30-meter-tall three-stage rocket successfully launched from Zhuzhuan in the Gobi Desert to send China's first satellite, the Dongfeng Hong-1, into orbit on April 24, 1970. This date is now celebrated as China's annual Space Day. The Long March 2 series of rockets were the real workhorse of China's early space program. The 2A was able to establish China's first network of reconnaissance satellites in the mid-70s. The Long March 2D managed to complete 59 launches, with only one partial failure in its 30 years of operation from 1992 to present. The 2E was China's first heavy lift vehicle, using four side boosters to place communication satellites in geosynchronous transfer orbit, and the Long March 2F is significant for sending China's first Taikonaut into space in 2003, making them only the third nation to independently put a human being into orbit. From here, China's rocket design started to evolve quickly, with several new variations coming out over the next 20 years. The Long March 3 deployed China's Baidu satellite network, that's their equivalent of GPS. The Long March 4 established China's advanced weather satellites. The Long March 5 is significant for being China's biggest and most powerful rocket to date. This is the rocket that sent China's first payload to Mars, the Tianwen-1, that included both an orbiter and a rover. The Long March 5B variation was designed specifically to lift the three primary modules of the Tiangong space station into orbit, each weighing in at around 22,000 kilograms. The Long March 6 is a very light-duty rocket meant for deploying clusters of small satellites that are somewhere between the size of a toaster and a microwave. The Long March 7 was designed specifically to launch the Tianzhou cargo spacecraft for the Tiangong station, and that brings us to the current point in China's rocket development. They are actively working on two new designs, the Long March 8 and the Long March 9. The version 8 is pretty much aiming to be an equivalent to the SpaceX Falcon 9, which is currently by far the most frequently launched rocket in the world. If successful, this would be China's first reusable rocket booster. But it's with the Long March 9 where things get really interesting, because this is China's first ambition to not only match, but surpass their international rivals in the space race. Massive rockets with a super heavy lift capability are essential to interplanetary travel. This is how NASA was able to land on the moon back in the 60s with their Saturn V, generating 7.6 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. This is the only way that you can get a crew to the moon along with all of the infrastructure that they need to land and then come home again safely. And in the present day, NASA has their second generation super heavy rocket in operation, the SLS, which pushes the record to 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. Meanwhile, SpaceX is inching closer to getting their own super heavy rocket into orbit, the Starship. 
which will far exceed even the SLS in terms of raw power. So this is the league of rocket power that the Chinese need to enter in order to compete, and right now they are a bit late to the party. The Long March 9 was first announced in 2011, and was envisioned as a 103 meter tall rocket with a massive 9.5 meters in diameter. That's larger than the SLS core stage at 8.4 meters, and even larger than the 9 meter diameter Starship. The Long March 9 would launch 140 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit, 50 tons to lunar injection orbit, and 44 tons to Mars. This would be achieved by using four chemical engine side boosters loaded with an insane dual chamber kerosene burning engine called the YF-130, each twin nozzle engine making 480 tons of thrust. Each booster would have two of these YF-130s with another four loaded into the core stage. That would be followed up by a second stage with two YF-90 hydrogen engines continuing to push the payload into orbit with 230 tons of thrust each. And the final send to the desired orbit would be made by a third stage with four YF-79 hydrogen burning vacuum optimized engines with 25 tons of thrust each. So this is a beast of a rocket and with the capability to put 50 tons into lunar orbit, it would give China the power they need to construct their own moon base and infrastructure with a sustained human presence. The Long March 9 could also be reconfigured to launch with only two side boosters, or even no boosters at all depending on the payload requirements. So this would be an incredibly versatile rocket that could even replace the Long March 5 and 7 in the Chinese fleet. To date, we've seen two of the components of the Long March 9 materialize. In October 2022, China successfully tested the YF-79 engine for the rocket's third stage, and in March 2023, the Chinese showed off a 9.5 meter diameter propellant tank designed for the Long March 9. Now, here is where things get confusing. In November 2022, the Chinese reported that they were scrapping the original plan for the Long March 9 and replacing it with a brand new reusable design. The new vision of the rocket ditched the four side boosters in favor of a single core design that basically looked like a painted version of a Starship. The new reusable core stage would be upgraded to 26 methane burning engines, each with 220 tons of thrust. Over the past few months, we've seen a flurry of different design concepts pop up that show different diameters between 10 and 11 meters wide and different variations of engine chemistry that range from methane to kerosene and back to methane again. The latest report we've seen came in January 2023, directly from Zhu Mingkun, a senior rocket designer at the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology. According to the report, the baseline model of the Long March 9 will be a large, three-stage rocket about 110 meters tall and 10 meters in diameter. It will have a liftoff weight of about 4,000 metric tons and the thrust power of nearly 6,000 tons. This will be enough to maintain their goal of sending 50 tons into a lunar transfer orbit. Gu also said that it will be able to send a spacecraft on deep space missions as well, including a future mission to place Chinese astronauts on Mars. To increase the versatility of this new Long March 9, the rocket can also be flown as a two-stage vehicle, removing the center section. This shortened rocket would still be capable of putting 150 tons of mass into low Earth orbit, more than five times China's current maximum capacity with the Long March 5B. In both variations of the Long March 9, the first stage booster will be fully reusable to reduce operational costs. So that's left a bit of an open question about just what version of the Long March 9 China is actually going to make. Will they follow through with the original design that has already been in development and testing, or scrap all of that work and concentrate on the Starship-esque reusable rocket? We've already seen the Chinese demonstrate a consistent pattern of iterating on their rocket designs and building multiple variants on the same class of Long March rocket, so it wouldn't be surprising if they do build the original Long March 9 design sometime in the next five years, just to cement that capability. They've already developed and tested the third stage engine for the original design, and they built an entire fuel tank just last month with the dimensions for the old rocket, not the new one. If they can get that original Long March 9 into operation within the next five years, 
which is totally possible given everything that they've demonstrated so far, then the Chinese Space Agency has time to work on the reusable upgrade for operation maybe sometime in the 2030s. We've seen how much work it's taken SpaceX to get their Starship up to the point where it's at right now, and it's still not even ready for a first test flight. If we look at where Blue Origin is with their similarly designed New Glenn rocket, that one is even further behind in development. So if the Chinese want to stay competitive and establish a presence on the moon alongside NASA and their partner space agencies, then they need to get an upgraded rocket into service that can at least punch in the same weight class as the SLS. And that's entirely possible for them to do right now. And that is the real reason they're developing the Long March 9 rocket. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.